Welcome to our telecast today. It's going to be a very special day and a very special week. We're talking about what happens when God shakes a nation. Now, these principles are applicable to any nation, but I will, especially on our panel here, we'll be talking about Canada in particular. We do believe that God has a great plan and purpose for our country, that God put our country in its place and in its time for a purpose. And so uh, Tina is here today and Pastor Nathan Thurber, my co-worker of many years, they're here and they're ready to uh, jump in and speak on this topic. We've got a lot happening in this program as we do every single day. So we're glad that you're with us. And I know that this echoes in many hearts, believers who are concerned about our country and where Canada is heading. So we'll go to that. But right now, it's time for Peter's Perspective. Well, Canada's flag is unique. Red, white, and a leaf. Many countries have flags that depict planets, stars, and a cross. Some flags depict a sword or a lion. Before the Canadian Parliament approved our current flag in 1965, there was much debate as many Canadians wanted to hold on to the flag of the United Kingdom. In the generations that followed, the idea that Canada is the land of the maple leaf has indeed taken hold. From the age of 19 to 35, I crisscrossed Canada from Newfoundland to Vancouver Island, conducting Christian outreaches in churches, auditoriums, hockey rinks, curling rinks, and during the summer months in a thousand-seat tent. I got to know Canada in a way that few people have had the privilege to know our beautiful land. A vision for a Canadian spiritual awakening was birthed in my heart. One day I looked at the flag. To me, the red spoke of the blood of Jesus Christ. God has ordained that cleansing for sins, for the sins of the world, would be accomplished through the blood that flowed through Christ's veins. And I looked at the white. The book of Revelation says that the color white symbolizes Christ's righteousness, not our self-made righteousness, which is, as the prophet said, a filthy rag, but Christ's righteousness, which is a gift, free. Yes, righteousness exalts a nation. But what kind of righteousness? Certainly not the one that we try to achieve in our own strength. No, it is Christ's own righteousness. Then I looked at the maple leaf and was reminded of the scripture that the leaves of the trees are for the healing of the nations. Canada may never be a military superpower, but we have the potential if we are willing to be a spiritual superpower. And the only source of such power is the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, after the Holy Spirit has come upon you, you shall receive power. The vision has stayed with me for these many years that Canada will experience the reality and the power of Christ's death and resurrection and receive His righteousness. And God's love will flow from Canada to the world. Well, I got uh, Nathan and, uh, and Tina here. Uh, what is your comment, Nathan? Anything? You were born well, in Nova Scotia, so you are more qualified, I guess, than I am to speak on this. Well, I was just about to agree on, first of all, that I think many people do, this echoes in their heart. I do have to say one correction. I was born in Pr Prince Edward Island. But anyhow, <laughs> I, I have to set that aside. But, no, I do think this echoes in the heart of many people watching the program today. And I think the world being the focus, you know, Canada has changed a lot since even the flag was... Um, brought into being. The world really now lives in Canada. Immigration continues, especially the city where we're broadcasting from today. They say 50% are, are immigrants. So we have the world here and we have a great opportunity, but of course, and, and I look forward and I think those viewers watching are the, the message we're about to hear you speak, powerful message. And I think it's of such importance to, uh, for each of us to come to grips with what's happening. Taina, you are like I am, uh, 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 immigrated to naturalized Canadian, That's although you right. came a little bit later than I did. Yeah. Uh, what, what are your thoughts as you hear me mention, and you've heard me speak of this other times, about uh, how even the flag speaks in a symbolic way? Yeah, uh, well, I can say that we have uh, been crisscrossing this country, beautiful country, here and there, and uh, we have heard the, the concerns that people have about the the spiritual state of the country or how where it is heading and uh, of course I must say that when we believe in something 
that always it, it leads into action mm. and that's probably what people also want to see uh, happening yeah no I, and when you say that i'm reminded that in each of the cities we visited last year, you and I, we had a Q&A time. People could ask whatever questions yes. they wanted, and it was, it was as sure as the sunrise. There was going to be a, a question related to Canada and where the country is heading spiritually. Right. So that is a yeah. deep concern. Well, uh, we got much to share today. You will hear much more from uh, uh, Nathan and Tyna here. But uh, during this month, where we are really speaking a word into our, for our country, we also have something we would like to put in your hand. Watch this. Scripture teaches that God sets nations in their time and place. Is this Canada's time? Is an unprecedented spiritual awakening possible across Canada? Peter Youngren's prophetic video message, When God Shakes a Nation, is provocative, stirring, and life-changing. Also included in this package is the four-CD album, Vision 2020. In total, you will receive almost five hours of powerful teaching and prophetic proclamation designed to help you discover your destiny, your purpose, your place of fulfillment. Age, background, gender is no barrier. This is God's time for Canada and for you. Available with your gift of $37 or more. Shipping and handling included. Order online now at peteryoungren.org slash TV offer or call 416-745-1820 or receive the digital copy for your gift of $20 or more by visiting peteryoungren.org slash digital TV offer. 22% of the people who live in Canada were born outside of this country and I'm one of those. I didn't know much about Canada as a child except maybe I watched some hockey game when Sweden, which was my home country, played against Canada. But then I received Christ as my Savior. I received a powerful experience with the Holy Spirit. And I, I became on fire, spiritual. And so a Canadian began to profoundly influence me. The late Dr. Oswald J. Smith, founder of People's Church in Toronto, Canada. I began to read all of his books, as many as I could get my hands on. And then one day I ordered a copy of, of his biography entitled Not Made for Defeat. And I don't remember the details, but one paragraph, a very short paragraph, a sentence or two, stood out to me. In the biography, he mentions that Canada as a nation had never experienced a nationwide spiritual awakening. That puzzled me. You know, I knew already that many of the European countries, Germany, France, the Scandinavian countries, the UK, had experienced nationwide spiritual stirrings. And of course, south of the border, the United States of America, uh, you hear people speak of the revivals, the awakenings there. And so I thought, that's so strange. Canada has never had a national spiritual awakening from coast to coast. A, a time when, when the, the gospel, the message of Jesus, was the talk of the country. And so I had no idea that I would end up in Canada but a few years later, at the age of 19, I was invited to hold my first gospel campaign. I was called a teenage evangelist at the time. And for the next 16 years, I crisscrossed Canada from Newfoundland to Vancouver Island. I, I have the privilege of getting to know this country in the way that few people have had the privilege to do. You know, I could drive without a map. Uh, we didn't have GPS in those days all the way from Toronto to uh, Fort St. John, British Columbia, or to the uh, far reaches of, of, uh, of uh, Sydney, Nova Scotia. I was so familiar with the country. I experienced wonderful things. I learned to love this country. And, and many people came to the Lord. I think my, my greatest experience in those years was in Edmonston, New Brunswick, a town of about 45,000 people, mostly French-speaking, the Baptist denomination, the Pentecostal Assemblies of Canada. Others had tried to start a church there, but it hadn't succeeded. There was a little prayer group of about uh, maybe 10 or 12 people, but there were Christians living one or two hours away. They were willing to join in, and so we went there, and we rented, big step of faith, an auditorium seating 1,000 people. And I still remember it because we were so... Uh, nervous and, and such tension. Would anybody come? On the first night with all the Christians driving in from surrounding areas, we had just about 100 people. 
and 19 people from Edmonston to Brunswick responded to give their life to Christ. The next night, we had over 300 people, and I still remember 101 individuals received Christ. The next night, the auditorium was packed, and it stayed packed for the rest of the week, and over 1,000 people responded to give their life to Christ. It, all I'd heard was that the French-speaking people, because of their heritage, because they're the Roman Catholic background, they would not be receptive to the message that you must be born again, but I found that not to be so. I found especially as Jesus Christ revealed himself as a healer, it was sometimes easier to pray uh, for those Catholic friends. They were more ready to receive Christ as a healer than many of the Protestants and evangelicals that I had known. And so Canada became a part of my, my heart. I began to see a vision for this country several years into it. And I'll tell you more about that later. But let me first of all ask a question. Is Canada in the Bible? Well, arguably, every time that the word world is there, <laughs> that's Canada. But I want to give you three scripture verses where absolutely Canada is in the Bible. It says in Haggai chapter 2, verse 7, God says, I will shake all nations. That includes Canada. You say, well, what kind of shaking are we talking about? Earthquakes, natural catastrophes, financial collapse, Wars, famines, plagues, pandemics. Well, the book of Hebrews interprets and gives us understanding regarding what Haggai was prophesying about. And in Hebrews chapter 12, they quote Haggai's prophecy. This indicates the removal of those things that are being shaken as of things that are made, that the things which cannot be shaken may remain. And the whole book of Hebrews was about this, that the religious system, as the Jewish people knew it, and it was about man-made things, the temple, which would be destroyed, which would be shaken, that was man-made, all the utensils, all the different traditions. And what the Hebrew writer here is saying is that everything, that can be shaken. And he, he's speaking about religious systems. They will be shaken. And what will take over? That which is unshakable, namely the gospel of the kingdom of Jesus Christ, that cannot be shaken. And, and so this directly speaks to the Jewish nation and what they experienced in the first century. But I submit that it speaks to all people. And there are many other verses of Scripture that says, for example, that the knowledge of the Lord shall cover the whole earth as the waters cover the sea. And Haggai, when he said it, he said it was for all nations. Yes, it applied to Israel, but all nations means Canada. God says, I will shake Canada. The religious systems, man-made traditions, ideas that are not really based in Christ and his gospel, will be shaken. Why? So that that which remains is that which cannot be shaken. There's another scripture verse where I would argue that Canada is in the Bible. It's found in Matthew chapter 4. And it's the devil speaking. Now, when the devil speaks, we don't always pay attention. We shouldn't do, but, but the Bible correctly quotes the devil. It says, the devil uh, show Jesus all the kingdoms of the world. And he said to him, all these things I will give you if you fall down and worship me. Interesting. So the devil, the personification of evil, uh, the enemy of God's purposes, he says, I own the nations. I own Canada. Maybe you think, well, sometimes it seems like he's exercising that ownership, but uh, I would hasten to say, remember, this is the father of lies speaking. He says, I own the nations. I give them to whoever he wants. Well, that gives us a little indication of a spiritual battle. That, there's another passage of Scripture where the Lord is speaking through the Apostle Paul in the city of Athens, and in many ways the city of Athens it's very much like Canada today. Athens had a, 
a mosaic of religions and cultures, people from all over the world. They came either to Athens or to Rome, and people were there discussing philosophies and religions and ideas. And, and here's what Paul says. God has made from one blood every nation to dwell on the earth and has determined their pre-appointed times and the boundaries of their dwelling. The phrase all nations includes Canada. So, so that I would say it says their time in 1867, this nation was founded. And we talk about two founding nations, but it's really three. We talk about the French and English and, and, and often have forgotten the, the powerful influence of the First Nations people. And I want to say to you who are from one of the First Nations, God wants to work powerfully through you. You have tasted abuse. You have seen what religion can do at its worst. And so if anybody is ready and primed for the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ and the acceptance that God gives to every person, I say we include, when we talk about a spiritual awakening coming to Canada, we include First Nations. But, but here it says, God set the nations in their time and with their pre-appointed boundaries. So on the basis of that scripture alone, I am saying God has a place and a purpose for the nation of Canada. I, I don't think we will ever be a military superpower. We'll never co compete with our neighbor to the south. But I submit to you, Canada can be a spiritual superpower, a gospel superpower. We have an acceptance around the world. I sometimes joke with my American friends because when we travel around the world, in Asia and Africa especially, if we are in areas where there's some political and religious tension, some of my American friends, they try to get a hold of a maple leaf to put it on their lapel. Fake Canadians. They're trying to pretend they're Canadians because they think that they're less of a target for a potential terrorist because our country has a great reputation. All over the world, I, I meet people who, who tell me how wonderful Canada is. I don't even uh, think, they, I think they, they, they maybe don't understand the problems we are facing and the spiritual problems we are facing, but, but they speak highly of our country. This gives us an opportunity for Canada to be a place where the gospel can go in a powerful way to the world. So I don't stand here in a light-hearted way just to say, oh, some revival, some awakening. No, 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 no. I realize the gravity of the situation. I realize that to many Canadians, they don't even think about God. They don't think about church. They don't think about Jesus Christ. I realize that our country has welcomed millions of people to our shores that have brought their own religions and ideas and beliefs. So I'm not saying it lightly. I'm saying it counting the cost, assessing the need. What will it take for Canada to have a spiritual awakening from coast to coast? And in the book of Zechariah, there's a picture of a spiritual awakening. What happens when God shakes a nation? And in the programs to come this week, we're going to be addressing there are seven specific things that are prophesied that happens when God shakes a nation. But uh, uh, that, that'll be in the programs to come. I'm going to go to you, Tina. Any thought that you have on what you heard there? Well, like I, I said in the beginning, um, action is required. And, and I can see that um, more and more uh, now when you went and kind of packed what you are uh, presenting from the Bible, I mean, all generations, they have needed action and we are now, this is now our time yeah. and our country and we need to take action. Well, you know, I heard a politician, uh, I think it was in the States, I think they were quoting their former president, Ronald Reagan, who said that, uh, you, you know, freedom, you're only one generation away from losing their freedom. Yeah. Well, and, 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 but I'm not a politician, so I thought, well, that personal relationship with Jesus Christ, the church is only one generation away, but we don't take it for granted mm -hmm. that just the people who grow up in church and go to Sunday school, that they're going to be suddenly just, uh, you know, be on fire for God. It, it has yeah. to happen in every generation. Nathan, any thought that you have? Well, the, the, what is the makeup of an awakening? And I think the way you've articulated it is 
an outward focus. Yes, we are blessed, but an outward focus on the nations, mm. uh, according to Haggai. Uh, you mentioned Oswald J. Smith. I think that's what he said. He had a famous quote. You've said it many times. I don't think you said it in that teaching right there, but the light that shines the farthest shines the brightest at home. So mm. it, it definitely, and Canada has a history. Oswald J. Smith, others, even the, you mentioned uh, the Pentecostal Assemblies of Canada. We, I've traveled a lot with you to different parts of the world. Uh, those their centers where they had uh, different missionary work set up, maybe not so active any longer. And you see a little bit of a, a dimming in those areas, not to criticize anybody. I'm just saying, you know, it, we have to recognize what it was. But the opportunity is there, I think, in uh, immigration to Canada. If you think of Paul spreading the gospel, he used the trade routes of the Roman Empire throughout Asia, and the whole the gospel went in those uh, ways. We have, the we have the world right here. It gives us connections to the world, and so we, we focus on that area. But the light that shines the, bright, the furthest, brightest at home. And so as a pastor, that gives me something to focus on. Well, I mean, it's, it's the idea that because some people think if you get on an airplane, of course, it's been hard during this pandemic to get on an airplane, but uh, and suddenly you have this fervor to reach people in Africa or somewhere else. But really, if we're interested in reaching people, we're interested in reaching people wherever we are. Right. Is, nothing hits you on the airplane, so to speak, to some mission field, mm -hmm. because uh, missions is all around us and it's all around the world. And so uh, that's I want to say as well what uh, I kind of watched myself. I just gave that teaching here before we came on the air, and I, uh, I thought of the comment I made about First Nations. Mm -hmm. Now, we have seen, Tina, you and I, yeah. uh, First Nations people. I know, for example, in downtown Winnipeg, mm -hmm. you see them in Saskatoon and Regina. You see so many for First Nations. And uh, I think sometimes they have not played the role they should have in our country, but I believe spiritually that they are going to be among the carriers of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We, we're going to talk about more. We're going to pray about this. And we're going to pray for your prayer request. I want to hear from you. And, uh, and please send your prayer request. You can call the number on the screen there. You can text your prayer request. Every day I receive a report of what's come in on the text and prayer request. And so, uh, in fact, uh, we might in the next tomorrow, if we don't have that phone with us, it's over here in the office. We're going to lay hands on that phone and pray in the name of Jesus here in the next program we do. Um, but uh, we, we want to just give you a quick update of what's happening with the ministry. And then the three of us want to pray for you, believe God for you. And so uh, let's watch that. Earlier this year, World Impact Ministries saw tens of thousands respond to Christ in campaigns in Africa and Asia. I confess with my mouth, Jesus is Lord. Jesus Thank you, Allah. That my sins are forgiven. Then came COVID-19. Instead of retreating, Peter Youngren heard the Holy Spirit whisper, what is the next step of faith that God wants you to take? God is a God of the now. And so this month, World Impact Ministries is conducting a massive gospel campaign on Facebook Live, YouTube, and other social media platforms, aimed at sharing the message of Christ with the world's third largest language group, 490 million individuals who speak the Hindi language. Divided between 672 people groups, many live in areas where there is less than one Christian per 1,000 population. Based on one previous experience, we know that for every $1, we will reach 10 or more people. That means $100 reaches at least 1,000 people. Everyone in response will receive the 42-page gospel tract, Light of the World in Their Own Language. Peter Youngren stated, a deep, strong sense of urgency and determination from the Lord has gripped my heart. Our focus is a maximum harvest of souls. Will you make this possible by taking a step of faith? Give your very best gift to advance the gospel online at give.peteryoungren.org or call with your gift now at 416-745-1820 or text your gift 289-768-8934 or mail it to the address at the bottom of the screen. Please do what you can, but do it now. Thank you in Christ's name. Taina, you were with me there, very close to the river Ganges, among many of the Hindi-speaking people there, and, and what we saw touched our heart. Just, just very briefly, we're running out of time, but just yeah. 
if you can summarize what you experienced there. Oh, it was uh, heart-wrenching uh, to see how people just wanted to dip in that river to, to get their sins forgiven. And, uh, you know, as Christians, it, it, it made me very, very sad. And uh, that, that this is how far we are with the gospel. Yeah, we, we, we had to do, do <laughs> so much more. I want to yeah. say, will you help us? We are not pulling back. Mm. We, we are now, Nathan, you just told me here that we have an Urdu translator ready to go. We can reach Pakistan on Facebook campaigns. And we put tens of thousands of dollars into this to reach maybe millions of people in, in, who speak these different languages. We're really doing missionary work. So thank you so much for helping us with that. And, and you can see there on the screen how you can participate. Call when you give right now, or you can go online to give and whatever, just follow the instructions. They'll leave them there for a moment. I, I want to go back to our theme, which we have just launched. I do believe that the Holy Spirit will speak to people's hearts about Canada. Faith must come in your heart. You know, you know, these are not slogans. We have thought about the seriousness of the situation. We realize that our country is far from a spiritual awakening. So when we say we're believing for it, we're not saying it in a light way. We're saying it very profoundly. And, and, and Nathan, there are people who are thinking about their own family. Would you pray right now? Pray over every family that's represented. And, and we're down to the last minute, so you got to pray quickly, but pray in the name of Jesus Lord, right I now. I pray for families that are represented watching today. We thank you, Lord, for every heart that has not been touched by the love of your son, Jesus. Help their eyes to be open to this and to experience that love and to experience a personal relationship with your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Because when God shakes our country, it means for your family. We believe him for this. And let me tell you, every day we are now, our, our, our hearts are filled with this. How can we see our nation wake up to the reality of Jesus Christ? And, and as Nathan prayed right now, I believe God touched your heart and maybe you needed, had a need in another area of your life. Uh, we want to hear what God has done for you, send you prayer requests, and then we thank you so much for your participation. And don't forget to order the material that we're offering this month, the whole package when God shakes a nation. God bless you. You are loved. Thank you. Your participation makes this global gospel ministry possible. To share your prayer request or to help bring the gospel to those who have never heard it, call 416-745-1820. You can give at www.peteryoungren.org or send your gift to World Impact Ministries at P.O. Box 62039, RPO, Victoria Terrace, North York, Ontario. M4A 2W1 or PO Box 433 Winchester, Kentucky 40392-9800 Together, let's give everyone a chance to know God's love in Jesus Christ.